This video was brought to you by our book. Find out more and find out how you can get an exclusive pin badge free with your purchase at the end of this video. So if you're a regular viewer of this channel, or even just the news more generally, you'll know that the EU and UK are currently having a bit of a tiff about the Northern Ireland Protocol. The Northern Ireland Protocol was negotiated by the EU and Johnson's government back in 2019 as a replacement for the backstop, which Brexiteers hated so much that it scuppered Theresa May's deal the previous year. Essentially, the Northern Ireland Protocol was created in order to allow the UK to develop its own laws and achieve regulatory divergence from the EU, while maintaining an open border on the island of Ireland and the integrity of the EU single market. The Northern Ireland Protocol creates a regulatory border in the Irish Sea, which acts as the de facto UK-EU border. Unsurprisingly, this really angered the Unionist community in Northern Ireland. And Irish Unionist politics is currently in a bit of a crisis, as we explained in more detail in this recent video. But one thing that all of the Unionist parties can agree on is that they hate the Northern Ireland Protocol. So much so that the three main ones, the DUP, UUP and TUV, all brought legal challenges against it back in February. The point is that the Northern Ireland Protocol isn't really working for the Unionist community in Northern Ireland, and that's making Northern Irish politics unsustainably volatile. This all brings us to now, with the UK currently blaming the EU and the EU blaming the UK. According to the UK, it's the EU's fault for being inflexible and worrying too much about the so-called integrity of their single market. This has meant that the EU has demanded an unreasonable amount of checks in the Irish sea border, which is what the UK thinks the Unionists are getting upset about. According to the EU though, this is all the UK's fault, because it's what they signed up to. Put simply, Boris Johnson signed up to an international agreement which had obvious trade-offs. The upside was getting Brexit done, the downside was the border in the Irish Sea, which was always going to upset Unionists, and he's now refusing to accept that downside. This has created a sort of blame stalemate, with both sides pointing fingers at one another, refusing to budge while Unionists get grumpier and grumpier. In an effort to break that deadlock, on Wednesday the UK government published a 28-page Northern Ireland Protocol command paper. The paper starts with a foreword from Boris Johnson, which sets the blame squarely at the EU, with Johnson claiming that the UK repeatedly proposed alternative means to the protocol and accuses the EU of being inflexible. Johnson then floats the idea of triggering Article 16, which is basically a last resort clause that says if the protocol is leading to, quote, serious economic, societal or environmental difficulties, then one party can unilaterally take safeguard measures. There's then a second foreword by David Frost, the UK's chief negotiator, and Brandon Lewis, the Northern Ireland secretary, which basically says a similar thing. All in all, the paper tries to say three things. Firstly, it explains that the UK wants to change the protocol. Secondly, it tries to justify this change. And thirdly, it tries to convince the EU to engage with it. So let's start with the first thing. What does the UK actually want? Well, a good way of explaining it is that at the moment, the default assumption for goods going into Northern Ireland is that they're going into the EU. This means that they're subjected to tariffs and regulatory checks. This is because Northern Ireland is de facto in the EU's customs territory and regulatory area for goods, so it's treated as if the goods are going straight into the EU. The EU likes this because it guarantees the integrity of the EU single market. In other words, it guarantees that goods which don't conform with the EU's rules can't get into the EU by sneaking in via Northern Ireland. Despite the EU liking this arrangement, they did agree to some possible exceptions to this rule. One of these is that the Northern Ireland Joint Committee can decide that certain goods are not at risk of moving from Northern Ireland into the EU or the Republic of Ireland, and that thus they don't have to be checked. But the default assumption is that all goods going from Great Britain to Northern Ireland are treated as if they're going into the EU. The UK wants to flip this assumption though, and basically make it so that the default assumption is that any goods going from Great Britain into Northern Ireland are going to stay in Northern Ireland, and not enter the EU. 
In practice, this would mean that unless GB exporters explicitly state their goods are going onto the EU from Northern Ireland, they wouldn't need any checks. Now, the EU are obviously less keen on this, because it means less checks and therefore a higher risk to the integrity of the single market. But the UK argue in the paper that there's increasing evidence that the risks to the single market are extremely limited, so the EU should be more flexible. And there's probably some truth to this. The Northern Ireland executive estimated that from January to March, GB NI checks represented approximately 20% of the EU total, more than any other single EU member state, despite the fact that Northern Ireland's population is 1.8 million people and just 0.5% of the EU, which suggests that some relaxation of checks is in order. But it's illogical to infer that the risk to the single market is extremely limited because so far it's been alright. It could instead be that the current regime, which runs on the default assumption that goods are going into the single market, is doing its job and therefore keeping non-EU goods out of the single market, and thus getting rid of it could be catastrophic. Anyway, on to the second thing. The justifications. Fundamentally, the UK is asking to scrap an international treaty that it signed just 18 months ago. How can it justify this sudden change of heart? Well, according to the command paper, it's because they never really wanted to agree to it in the first place. The command paper blames everyone else for it signing up to the protocol. It blames the EU because it apparently rejected the UK government's offer for other proposals. It blames Parliament for radically undermining the government's negotiating plan. And it even blames the previous government for building in certain assumptions that it didn't like. The implication is that the government never really wanted to sign the Northern Ireland Protocol, despite it being a key part of the deal that Boris Johnson described as an excellent deal, which he said would protect the peace process in Northern Ireland. The government also claimed that they always thought the protocol would be up for renegotiation. The command paper claims that it was clear that further discussions would be necessary to determine arrangements in practice. Essentially, the government's justifications are that they never wanted to sign up to the protocol anyway, and they always thought that it would require renegotiation. At this point, you might be thinking, why would the EU accept any of this? From the EU's point of view, the current protocol is maintaining the integrity of the single market, and bluntly, the UK signed up to it. The EU may be willing to relax their rules somewhat, say on medicine or sausages, both of which have proved politically controversial, but they've got no incentive to commit a wholesale rewriting of the protocol. In response to this, the command paper argues that if the EU doesn't engage, the UK will be within its rights to trigger Article 16, the safeguard clause mentioned earlier, and unilaterally suspend the protocol, which wouldn't exactly be ideal for the single market. Essentially then, if the EU don't engage, the UK will just do what it wants to unilaterally, and this will almost certainly provoke some sort of legal response from the EU, which wouldn't be ideal for either side. So that's what's in the paper, but what's actually going to happen? Well, the EU have already rejected a wholesale renegotiation of the protocol, unsurprisingly. This means that unilateral action from the UK is pretty likely, and there's probably going to be some legal tussling ahead, but no legal tussling is going to sort the fundamental issue, which is that there's no obvious way of having UK regulatory divergence from the EU without a border, while maintaining the integrity of the single market. Those things are apparently incompatible, and everyone knew this from Brexit day one, so it looks like Brexit may never end. What do you think though? Who's in the right and what should happen next? Be sure to comment your thoughts below. If you want to dive deeper into Brexit, then you should check out our book, Brexit the Colouring Book, and our exclusive new bundle. The book runs through the entirety of the Brexit story, from the referendum to the deal, via 25 drawings and explainers. Even if you're not into colouring then, it's a cool memento of this political history that we went through together. If you're interested, we've also added a new bundle whereby you can get a copy of the book and an exclusive number 10 pin absolutely free, with this pin available nowhere else right now. You can find out more by clicking the link below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.